Dear Lord, I trust in your mercy. Greetings, Hello. Greetings to you. Tell me, do you have any news of Imran's son, the promised Messiah? I thought you were going to bring him to the temple, Zachariah. We're looking forward to seeing him. Dear friends, don't make Zachariah upset now. I should think that the birth of Imran's child has troubled him enough, don't you agree? Why is that? Is the child not the Jewish savior he himself has been telling us about? Where have you been? Do you not know that the child was a girl? <laughs> what? A girl? <laughs> <laughs> Do you people have no shame? You should be aware of God's wrath. How dare you make fun of this man, a religious scholar? Have you come here to learn lessons on piety? Or lessons on ridicule? What have we said that has upset you so much? I would advise you not to be those people who persistently turn their backs on the truth of a situation. They know God, but then they foolishly become enemies of him and of his prophet. Although these people are scholars, God leaves them and lets them go astray. He leaves them wandering blindly on the wrong path, despite their wealth of knowledge. But we didn't mean to upset you, Zachariah. We just wanted to make sense of Imran's prophecy, that's all. You want to know about Imran's prophecy? Well, then you must listen to what I'm I have I'm sorry, to say. but you must excuse us now. These students need to get back to their studies. You see, they're already late. We'll be on our way. Excuse us. Excuse us. Goodbye, Zachariah. No one is prepared to listen to me, are they? What greater lesson is there than the birth of Imran's daughter? Well, I'm willing to listen, even if no one else is. Well, you see, Nathan, when Moses went to Mount Sinai for those 30 days, and those 30 days turned into 40 days, did his people not resort to worshipping a calf? Yes. All God wanted to do was test their faith a little, but the Israelites failed that divine test miserably. The foundation of faith lies in patience, which they simply did not possess. I know. I know that, but... And David was meant to build his temple, was he not? But it ended up getting built by Solomon instead. God sometimes tests believers with unexpected changes to their plans. In this time of great difficulty, we should all turn to him. I have kept my faith, Zechariah. But I'm starting to doubt whether Imran was a true prophet. Nathan. What do you want from me? I'm only human, after all. Your words are true. But the realities of life say something else. People are beginning to turn away when they see me coming. They desert whoever seems to support the truth. Most of my fellow believers feel this distress. Not just me, but times are hard for me. I can't even sleep at night anymore. It's so hard, Zechariah. What can I do? But you are different from everyone else. You are one of my best students. I'm certain that you will not let other people's remarks change you. I'm so tired. And I'm confused. I don't know what the right path is anymore. Listen to me, Nathan. 
I love you like you were my own son. You are quick and intelligent. More importantly, you're the only one I can rely on. You will have to preach religion one day. I am certain of that fact. So make sure you don't give in to these thoughts. Do not let Satan deceive you. Please pray for me. Mm -hmm. Jehovah, supporter and protector of the Jewish people. I cannot thank you enough for ruining Imran so comprehensively as you have done. You know well the deep down. I want the Israelites to achieve greatness. If this child had turned out to be a boy, it would have been a great tragedy. Zachariah would have been accepted as a prophet. He would then have grown powerful amongst the people and looked down on the Jews as the lowliest of people. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. I did something to make my mother leave Jerusalem. From then on, I had to keep my younger sister out of the public eye. It was as if she had committed a terrible sin. Girls are a true godsend. People do not realize how lucky and blessed they would be to have a girl child. But it's not an easy matter for people to understand, Zechariah. You know how stubbornly the Jewish people cling to their traditions. They are never going to change their beliefs, you know. Hmm. Yes, you're right. My dear neighbor, I heard that your husband passed away recently. What are you doing here? I've come to share in your sorrow. Oh, share my sorrow? You're the one who caused his death. Me? Yes, you. You have stripped us of God's blessings. You and your family are nothing but bad luck. My poor husband was not even seriously ill until last week. The dark presence of your daughter has brought bad luck to the entire city. And not to mention bringing humiliation upon her entire family. Go away. Get out of my house. Leave this place at once. If Hannah 
I had given birth to a boy, how could I have looked the neighbors in the face? Answer me that. I'm glad this happened. That girl always put on such airs in front of me. Who'd have thought that barren women could give birth at her age anyway? It's not surprising, though. All those prayers and sacrifices she made for God, he must have felt sorry for her. But God doesn't give anyone everything at once. Especially someone with such absurdly high hopes. She wanted to become a mother. And give birth to a baby boy. To a prophet, no less. At her advanced age. <laughs> Greetings to you, Iskar. Hello, Jeroboam. Uh, welcome, Jeroboam. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Hmm. Now then, Isaka. You wanted to talk to me? Yes, I did. Uh, Esther, tell him, please. Jeroboam, Yissachar has been thinking of you for a long time now. The time has arrived for celebration. Tell me, Jeroboam, have you seen that girl from our family? Which one? Golda, the girl that is always with me. She is very clever. Her parents have entrusted her to us because they don't have the means to look after their children. I think she would make a perfect wife for you, actually. Uh, the most important part is that she's a young girl, which means that she will give you a son. Sarah! Sarah! Call Golda out here. Yes, ma'am. Golda, come out here so Jeroboam can take a look at you. I trust that you have told her that she must be quiet and obedient in my house. And that I will not tolerate the slightest disobedience. Oh yes. I'm sure she knows very well what a great honor it is to have the opportunity to become the wife of the wise Jeroboam himself. I will pray hard that she gives birth to a boy for you, my friend. So unlike Imran and Zachariah, your bloodline will continue. The Jewish people will need a lot of boys to guarantee their future. Uh, it's the baby. My hands are dirty. Could you go for me, please? Oh, yes, yes, of mm -hmm. course. My dear Lord, please bestow a child on my sister Elizabeth, just as you bestowed the blessing of this child upon me. She is a wife of your prophet, after all. Make her wish come true, please. Call your Lord and show your gratitude to him. 
Be thankful for the blessings he has given this great nation. You must worship him and glorify him always. Contemplate his amazing creations you see around you. And take pride in his holy name at all times. May the hearts of the believers be filled with happiness knowing that Jehovah is our God. His shadow covers the entire world and he fulfills his promises to his people. Now and forever, we stand here as your humble servants, worshiping all your babies, all that you have done for the centuries to help us. Your people, So Zechariah received a revelation that the Lord had accepted Hannah's offering and would protect Mary and her offspring from harm. This revelation changed the course of the future of humankind. Disrespect this holy place? Get back! Away with you! Why are you leaving your child here like that? You're Imram's wife! Away with you! That child is a girl! Oh, God! Do you not know that women are not allowed in here? Have you gone mad, woman? Why have you put this child here like this? Take this child away right now, and ask God for forgiveness! Do you know how much trouble you've caused across Judea? Now she's giving her child away to the rabbis? Look at her. She wants to get rid of her own child. You may not care about your child, but consider your own honor. Don't disgrace yourself any more than you already have. Look at yourself. What kind of woman just abandons her baby like that? It's disgusting. They think they're part of the Prophet's family, but they act worse than commoners. When you people show no respect for the temple, how can you ever expect the commoners to do so? 
Zedekiah is here! The Honorable Zedekiah is coming! Look, Your Honor Zedekiah, come and see this awful disgrace! This woman has abandoned her daughter here! But you are the wife of Imran! What on earth are you doing? What I am doing is fulfilling the promise I made to God. I have given the baby a name. Her name's Mary. Mary? But the name Mary means servant of the temple! And I am entrusting her to the temple. My dear Lord, please bear witness that I have fulfilled my promise to you. Your offering cannot be accepted! Females are forbidden from entering the temple! Do you understand this? It is God who must accept my offering, not you. But if we decide not to allow it, this child will not enter the temple. And we shall certainly not allow it. If God wishes it, it will happen. Oh, what now? Look at this, Zachariah is here. Look at this mess, Zachariah. This is your wife's sister. Tell her to return home at once, and thank God we have pardoned her. However, the only reason we are pardoning her is out of respect for Imran, and that is all. God has accepted your offering. He has accepted Mary. He's accepted her? God has told me he will be protecting her and her offspring from Satan. Now you must look after this child until she is old enough to serve at the temple. Gracious Lord. I knew that you would accept her. There you are. What are you looking at? I'm looking at that. A mountain? My mother has told me that Jerusalem lies behind that mountain. Do you think God will accept me there? When I was a child, I had a dream about a man. I asked him, who are you? He looked down and gestured, and told me to be silent. I said to him, sir, did I say something wrong? 
He said no. You see, you asked a question, a question that will shorten your childhood. But in order to reach the heaven, sometimes you have to be a child. Did you recognize him? The man in your dream? Did you know who he was, Grandfather? Did you? Yes. He told me that he was the Messiah. The Messiah? Oh, I really wish I could have seen him as well. bear to be away from you for even a second. And where did you go today? We went to the hills nearby. I wish you had come too, Mother. <laughs> you don't know how beautiful it was. On the way there, we read prayers and verses from the holy book. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Your daughter is very intelligent, Hannah. She has memorized all the prayers and verses. Her memory is far superior to that of the rabbis at the temple. Look at this, darling. Look what I made for you. Put it on. You can use it to recite your prayers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is all I have Come on. in the world. Have mercy on Bring me. Bring everything that she has outside. I think Your this Honor, is everything, please sir. Please give me another chance. I beg you. A widow like her has no income to give you. Stop this at once. Hmm. Another chance? How many do you want? No. You've had enough. Please. People. This woman has made excuse after excuse for month after month not to pay off her debts. Now the interest on her debts has piled up to the heavens. Why do you keep borrowing if you can't pay off the debt? That is not very sensible, is it? The interest that you charge is unfair. How can it be that you take everything we have in return for a loan payment? You should have thought of that before you began borrowing from me. You know the rules, after all. Why do all Zachariah's supporters only turn to us when they're in trouble, I wonder? Now that your thugs have taken away all her possessions, let me say something to those men who are trying to browbeat us into submission. I must say something to quench my anger. Take that cow to the kitchen at once. Slaughter it so that the rabbis can feast on it tonight, and then preach to us about religion in the morning. You will be cast out of God's religion for this blasphemy of yours. God's religion? The Messiah will come and wreak our revenge on all of you for this. This is wrong. It is wrong for a woman to raise her voice in this manner. And why are you so afraid of us raising our voices? Here, take this money and spend it on whatever you need. Unlike your robes, our clothes do not have any pockets. I have nowhere to put that coin. Go, go! What are you waiting for? Come on! No, don't take it! Please! Please don't take it! It's the only thing I have left in the world! How can you do that? How can you take all I have? Do something, Zachariah! Please That's do right, something! That's right, Zachariah! Please! I Help that woman, Zachariah! Look what they're doing to that poor woman! And look what has become of us! How can this be acceptable? What is going on here? Don't start interfering now, Zachariah. It is, after all, your excessive sympathy towards the people which has made the people turn against the law. Why don't you go and attend to your supplications? Why are you behaving this way towards the people? And Nathan, what are you doing here amongst these oppressors? The temple ordered me to come here for this purpose. Honestly, rabbis, the people here are relying on you. Come to your senses. Help these poor people instead of making life more difficult for them. The Zechariah. We act according to the laws. The laws of our religion, don't you see? To be ridiculed and suppressed is the lot of us temple servants. It's strange 
how everyone has changed over the past few years. I'm sorry, am I disturbing you? Not at all, Issachar. But it's been a while since I felt at peace. Tell me, Nathan, are you still struggling to decide which path to choose? Don't tell me. I can see the uncertainty in your eyes. I saw Zachariah today. He was defending a poor old woman. I don't know. I have a strange feeling. About that child, Mary. Are you saying that you're afraid of an old man? And a little six-year-old girl? Are you? I'm afraid that this battle, which has surrounded Solomon's temple, is simply a battle of wills, rather than a war between good and evil in this world. I want to be on the side of truth. But I don't have the strength to make a decision. Well, you must choose. But that is so difficult for me. Without God's guidance, I am unable to distinguish between these paths. You have to help me, Issachar. This situation is really troubling me. Nathan, you are my brother-in-law, don't forget that. And you have known me for many, many years. Let me ask you a question now. In all the years you have known me, have you ever heard me tell a lie? No. Why do you ask? And why out of all of Zachariah's disciples, do you insist I should leave aside? Because I care for you. He also cares for me. And I'm certain he's not a liar. Don't you see, he likes you because he wants to use you and your youthful strength to achieve his own goals. But the reason I care for you, Nathan, is because I don't want a pure and innocent human being to fall into the hands of a dirty, manipulative old man like Zachariah. Do you understand me, Nathan? I just don't know. You're going to have to trust me. Think about ruling Judea or ruling the world, would you? You'll find peace of mind in these thoughts, just as I have. This is simply not possible. No girl has ever served in a temple. No female has ever entered this holy place. No girl has ever set foot in this part of the temple since it was built. Since it was built by Zero Babel, as you all know. So I ask you, what madness is this which we are considering? Jeroboam, you know perfectly well what this girl is worthy of. Her father was a religious man who sacrificed himself for you. And the child that herself... That may be so, but it doesn't mean that we can refute the religious laws of Moses and Aaron. You're right, Nathan. But this is not the law of Moses. It is the verbal law of Halakha, made up by the rabbis. So no one but they can revoke it. Revoke the Halakha, you say? The Halakha? What is wrong with you Pharisees? You're talking about ignoring the laws of the Halakha now. You might as well call all the Amorites all the Canaanites and all the Phoenicians to come and put their idols in our sanctum. Why don't we do that? Oh, their idols, Zedekiah? Their idols? How strange. How can you even compare these two things, Zedekiah? It's actually a true comparison, David. It makes no difference whether you revoke the law of the Halakha or the law of the Torah. And it makes no difference whether you put a girl in the temple or an idol in the sanctum. The Sadducees use every opportunity they can to promote their ways, and I, for one, have had enough of this! 
I'm not staying here for a moment longer to hear them trample our interests for their own benefit. I've had enough, and I'm leaving now. I, for one, will not tolerate this. No, come longer. back, Jeroboam. Oh, what a disastrous mess this is. And why are you so quiet, Itzakar? Can you not see plainly how terribly they are disrespecting this temple? Calm down now. You need to stop quarreling like little children. No unlawful act will take place in this temple. Look, there is Hillel himself. I honestly do not understand why Hillel, the high priest of the temple, is always with Zachariah. Greetings, Issachar. Greetings, Zedekiah. Greetings, dear rabbis. My dear children. What on earth has been happening in here these past few terrible minutes? The whole temple can hear you shouting. Why don't you ask Zachariah? As if the temple did not have enough to worry about already. And now Imran's daughter has been added to our list of problems. If we continue like this, I fear that very soon we will be obliged to hold our regular meetings with all the ladies of the town in the market square. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God that at least the Pharisees and the Sadducees can agree on this matter, if nothing else. Your Honor, you know that fulfilling a promise to God and placing a child in the temple to serve God is very common and is something that has been done at this temple for but many years. But your greatness, this time... The child happens to be a girl. And women are forbidden from entering the temple. Forbidden, forbidden, forbidden. Zachariah has always talked about segregating girls from boys, has he not? This problem can be fixed. We must simply build a chamber which separates her from the rabbis and the other servants. Simple as that. Are you out of your mind? A girl in Solomon's temple? What is so wrong with that? Are not the spirits of girls and boys of equal value under God? Unless one is more righteous, of course. Do not forget who this girl is. She's Mary. The spirits of girls and boys are equal, you say? Since when have they been considered equal in the Jewish custom? Answer me that, Zachariah. Please, if you can. So do you consider a man who serves God to be equal to a woman who has been created to serve her husband? Tell me, is a free person equal to a slave? You do not need to tell us the answer, Zachariah. We already know the answer. No, Zachariah is right. We are not going to give up the fundamental principles of Moses' religion, his virtue, his piety, and worship simply because of somebody's Listen to gender. Listen Zachariah and follow the prophet of God's instructions. He interprets the Torah for you. And without his guidance, you will not get you anywhere. You put Zechariah's prophethood before the laws of our religion? I don't believe it. What you're saying now is not Maybe it's better if... We send the women in our family to talk to Mary's mother. Maybe they can convince her to change her mind. It's been a long time since we heard from you. Esther said we should definitely come to visit you this week. We were getting quite worried about you. After all, we are family. We can't bear to see you sink further and further into isolation. You see, Hannah, I'm a mother myself. I understand how you feel, I do. It really makes my heart ache to even think about being separated from my dear child. For years, I was unable to have a child. One day, I was sitting under a tree when I saw a pretty little bird feeding its chicks with its beak. I prayed for a child with all my might. Imran asked God to bless us with a child. A child we would send to serve in the temple. And the dear Lord saw fit to answer our prayers. Your intention was to offer a boy, not a girl. This offer is not valid. Everyone knows that girls are different from boys. This girl is much greater than any boy. 
What are you talking about, Hannah? Tell me why is it that whenever someone has a girl, they go into hiding for ages and ages? The birth of a girl always brings shame and dishonor to any family. Can you not see that I was brought into Jeroboam's family to give birth to a boy? But then I had a girl. Watch your words. She is a healthy and beautiful girl. When I saw her for the first time, I was amazed at how the Lord ignites the flame of motherly love in our hearts so magnificently. Golda, do you not love your daughter? When you kiss and cuddle and hold her? Tell me, do you feel any differently when you see that she is a girl? No. No, I love my daughter so much. I remember after the pain of labor finished, and the midwife placed her in my arms, I couldn't stop crying from the joy. The joy I felt when I finally saw the child I had been carrying. She was white, with rosy cheeks. She was alive and crying. She was the most beautiful child I had ever seen. People started complaining that she was a girl. Even my husband left the house in anger and misery. When he left, Jeroboam, I mean, it made me terribly sad. He then spent a few days away from me in the temple. It very nearly broke my heart. I left the poor child alone in the corner of a room for about half a day. She cried her poor little eyes out. She was hungry. I actually made myself believe that she was a dirty creature and that I must stay away from her. But my entire being longed to be near her. I suddenly lost control of myself and went towards her. I smelled her and kissed her and squeezed her and cuddled her and fed her with the food that God himself had placed for her the comfort inside my breasts. Enough! Golda, what are you saying? It seems like you've forgotten who you are. You only came into Jeroboam's house because of our kindness. You had no decent clothes. You always wore shabby, tattered dresses. So why are you acting like a lady and giving lectures all of a sudden? If I hadn't helped you escape that poor, miserable life of yours, you would still be in that village, spending your days in hunger. People often follow the traditions of their ancestors. When, in fact, a little girl is just as sweet as a little boy, in a mother's eyes. So you're telling us that the people, the rabbis, and the Jewish elders are all wrong, and only you and Zechariah are right. Is that what you're saying? Zechariah is God's prophet, remember? And prophets never speak of their own accord. Now you're just repeating yourself. It's because of your beliefs that our husbands' positions are being threatened. Your husbands were never supporters of Zachariah in the first place. Zachariah, Zachariah, do you even know why your brother-in-law wants Mary to go to the temple? No. Why don't you tell me? He has grown old, and his wife is barren. He dreamed of having a child for many years. He busies himself teaching your child and shows her a lot of affection. Look at them there. Haven't you ever asked yourself why they keep you and Mary in their house and why they don't leave Mary alone even for a moment? I've heard that Zechariah takes Mary with him wherever he goes just so she can get used to his presence. That's his intention. He wants to take Mary to the temple so that she can become the child that he never had. Have you no shame? You should really be ashamed of yourself, Esther. Golda, we're leaving now. We don't belong here anymore. You don't have to leave, you know. You can stay. <clears throat> Why should we stay when you can't even show your family respect? This is going to cost you dearly. From now on, don't expect any sympathy from us because you won't get it. Let's go, Golda.
My strong and mighty lord, grant me the power to stand firm. I need all the strength I can get. Mary? Mother, do they insult you because of me? 